So you need a logo and you've decided to use Canva to create it. Maybe it's a logo for yourself, for your own business, or for a client you might be working for. But the question is, where do you start? Well, this video is going to answer that question. I'm gonna show you five resources you need to check out before you design your logo in Canva. Let's go. What is going on, everyone? Wait, wait, this... Too much movement again, again. What is going on everyone? Ronnie here, your go-to guru if you want to learn how to design with Canva. I'm super happy to be here this morning with you guys, sharing a little moment, sharing some knowledge about making logos. This week and previous week, I have been working one day last week, one day this week and one day next week on a force for good project. At Canva, we are allowed to take three days of force for good leave and work for a nonprofit organization or a social project. So I am currently working today, right after this, my second day for a logo design that I have accepted to do as a volunteer for an organization run by a friend of mine in Bangladesh. I've had the chance to go there and, and work with them several times and they need a new logo and they asked me and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. So while doing this work of redesigning or creating a logo for this organization, I thought this is an interesting process and I would like to run our viewers on the channel through this process. Where where to start if this is your first time creating a logo we are going to dive right into this i have five resources that i want to share with you that you should check out before you start designing your logo so without further ado let's dive right into it with resource number one all right, so the first thing you might want to do is to really understand what you can and cannot do when it comes to creating a logo with Canva. So for that, I have a resource for you. By all means, I will have all the links in the description of the video for you to go check out these resources. But the first one is called Canva's Licensing Explained, okay? It's a landing page that Canva recently created and uploaded on their website that speaks about all sorts of licensing, I would say, frequently asked questions and they bring some answers. So they have on the page not only resources about logos, but there is one section of this landing page called trademarks and logos. So it's a relatively short amount of information, but it gives you the gist of what you can and what you can't do with Canva in terms of designing a logo. So my understanding of this is that you can design a logo for your personal use, for your small business, but if you want to trademark your logo, meaning to claim exclusive rights on your logo or maybe a part of your logo, maybe an icon or anything that really is part of your visual identity that you have developed, if you want to go and register that, trademark that logo so that you are the only person or the the only company that can use that, an exclusive right, then there are some rules. But if you are happy to just design a logo and use it and you don't mind too much if somebody else is using part of that logo or similar looking element that you find in Canva, then you're fine. You don't need to go through all this hassle. You can just like design your logo, use it. Nobody's going to come knock at your door and say, hey, you use that logo from the Canva library. No, it's not going to work like that unless you want to trademark it, meaning you already can of like a big size company or you're working for a client which has the intention of trademarking his or her logo which you should find out if that's their intention before you accept the job and decide to do it in Canva. So it reads here a trademark has to be a unique symbol which is exclusively used by a brand owner. So for that reason you cannot use any free or pro content from the Canva library in a trademark meaning when you decide to register that logo when you trademark it okay. If you use free or pro content in any branded material included logos. Remember that other Canva users or free users can use the same content and therefore you don't have and you cannot claim exclusive rights. So what you can do if you decide to trademark, so in that case like you can still use Canva but you can use any font that you can find in the Canva library that is allowed. You can use shapes and lines and you can upload your own graphics. Okay so you have this little gif animation here that shows you if you decide to trademark your logo 
you cannot use, for example, coffee beans that you would find in the Canva library. What you can do is to use shapes and lines to recreate a shape similar to a coffee bean. That would be okay. And you can also use fonts. So that is the first point I wanted to spend time on. What can you do? If you are going to trademark, then there are some rules. You cannot use elements. You can use shapes, lines, and the fonts, but otherwise you are pretty much free to use anything you like. The second resource I want to share with you today is Canvas Hub for logos. This is an absolute gold mine. If you're going to create your logo, it gives you a nice place to start from. A cozy, nice hub where you will have different things at your disposal that will help you create your logo. So this is the landing page. This is what it looks like. It says logo. Again, there will be a link in the description to any of the resources I talk about today. So if I quickly scroll down this page, you will see different things and I'm going to break it down for you, explaining what you can find on this page. The first thing is just some general information about what you can find in the Canva library. So it's basically Canva pitching you what you can do with Canva. But if you're here, you probably already know what you can do. The second section, which is my favorite of the page, arguably, is a bunch of squared icons here, styles with different logo types or logo categories, which I find super useful because it gives you an indication on what to look for in the Canva library. So you have basketball logos. I'm a big fan of basketball. Restaurant logos, brand logos, food and drink logo, DJ logos, fashion logo, computer logos, etc, etc. You have this carousel right here that goes over, I would say, 30, 40 different logo categories. So this is a great place for you to start. So let's click on one of these ties and see where it takes us. I'm going to open this in a new tab. So it takes us directly to the Canva templates library and with the search cafe logos already typed in for you and the search result page for cafe logo. So this is great because if you've been commissioned by a local cafe to create their logo, there's a bunch of already made logos here that you could probably take inspiration from or just by looking at them, you will just start having these ideas. Or if you feel less inspired and you have less time maybe, and this is more like a hobby that you're doing, you could take any of these logos, change the name, maybe tweak the colors and you're good to go. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you on this logo hub page. This variety here of logo categories that lead to specific searches in the Canva template library. So if I continue scrolling down the page, I can see different things. Designing logos on the go. So this is a reminder that you can use Canva on your desktop, but also on your tablet, on your iPad, on your phone. Quick and easy designs. Yes, this is is to let you know that Canva also has this plethora of color palettes. So color palettes are really important when it comes to creating a visual identity, of course, but I wouldn't recommend starting with the color palette. I would probably recommend starting with your logo, and design it in black and white, which is what I've done while working for this nonprofit I'm working for at the moment. I designed the logo in black and white, and then I start introducing the idea of a color palette. But first you need to check if your logo works in black and white, which is the basic form of the logo. In my opinion, I mean, everybody can start where they like to, but this is how I did it for this logo. Then you have some information about branded templates right here. You have your five steps to create a logo for free. That's kind of like basic information, but the part that I wanted to show you is this part right here. The frequently asked questions for logo, especially the first one. What should a logo include? This part really helped me when I was kind of thinking about about the logo I wanted to create for this nonprofit. So it says this, a logo should easily identify in your brand and speak of its story. So the way I proceeded, I created a form, I created a questionnaire that I sent this, let's call him client. He's not paying me, but let's call him a client. So you will have this form or this questionnaire that you will send to your client prior to even starting the work to designing their logo because you need to understand their brand story. Okay, so in the questionnaire, I had questions like, give me five values your company stands for. And then I had questions about what is the mission of your company? What is the long-term vision of your company? You need to start digging to really understand what this company stands for, because the purpose of your logo, as this paragraph says here very nicely, is that it should speak your brand's story.
story. So it's super important that you are aware of that story before starting anything. Okay, so from the colors of your logo to the font style you use, it should essentialize the spirit of your brand. So you should really have a good sense of what your brand stands for, what it means, what it feels like almost. So you can express that through font, color, text, and shapes in your logo design. So if I continue to read the paragraph here, a great logo design has an identifiable color, shape, and text design. Your audience should see your logo and know your name, what services or product you offer, all packaged into one symbol. So this really helped me kind of get focused on what I needed to ask them before starting to design the logo and what I should encapsulate in this logo design. So I recommend you go back to this first paragraph here and you really absorb that information. Next, you have other questions. How can I add any image or graphic to my design? How do I export my logo with a transparent background? So this is all good. I recommend you read this. And then at the very bottom of this landing page, which is your logo hub in Canva, you have selected additional resources for creating logos. So create a logo in Canva. You have a design school course here about branding your business. Get inspired with our library of logo ideas. And then you have a couple of blog posts and a couple of other resources. Sources. All right, so this was my resource number two, this logo hub from Canva. Resource number three, I discovered actually by using resource number two. On the hub at the bottom, you have a couple of resources listed there. And this one is one of them. It's called Logo for Beginners, and it is a blog post from the Canva Learn blog. Okay, so Logos for Beginners. I'm gonna show you quickly what this looks like. Again, you'll find the link in the description. So let me give you a few reasons why you should take 10 to 15 minutes to really read this blog post and digest its information. Well, first, it starts with a couple of things you should do before you actually create your logo. It's called do your research. They talk about inspiration. They talk about understanding how you're different. This pretty much comes back down to your form or questionnaire that you will answer before starting, like all these questions you need to ask yourself or ask your client to answer before you get started. It pretty much sums that up. But to identify the right questions, these paragraphs are pretty interesting. Next, understanding the elements of a logo. And then here Canva will list different types of logo. Okay, so you have logo with symbols, you have word mark, you have letter marks, you have combination mark, emblems, all sorts of different logos, understanding their different styles. This is something I really also took a couple of minutes and decided when creating this logo for my client. I thought, what type of logo am I going to work with? And I decided to go for a word mark logo uh, coupled with a little emblem on it. I might show you the logo once it's finished in a future episode. I know I'm building building up that tension here, but it's not finished yet, so I cannot show it to you at this stage. So that is the second thing I think is really important in this article. The next thing that this blog post will teach you is what are the different parts of a logo, the different ingredients, the different elements. So we'll talk about color palette, graphics, typography, your fonts, and that's pretty much a good read to refresh your knowledge about fonts, for example, serif, sans serif, what are the differences, all this kind of stuff, which is going to be useful when it comes to choosing your typography, when it comes to choosing your color palette, how should you make these decisions for your logo? Well, you have some elements of answers in the blog post. And then Canva goes on in the blog post about how you can actually create the logo. You have different steps, I believe. You have five steps, yes, and some more inspiration at the end of the blog post. So I found this one pretty useful. I read it before I started my day, like a week ago. It really helped me, it inspired me, and so I wanted to take a little bit of time to recommend it to you as well. Whew, what an interesting journey creating your logo. How is everybody doing? I hope you're feeling all right. I hope I'm not talking too fast, not talking too much. Well, thank you for being here. Just wanted to take a little moment here to breathe, take a sip of your favorite drink. I have my glass of water right here. I'm a big fan of water. And yeah, talk about my favorite comment of the week. It's become a little bit of a tradition now on the channel. I like to take a little break in the middle of the tutorial to honor you guys who leave us comments every day in the comment section that we read and enjoy. So this week we have Irisland and she says, oh my God, you are a great 
example of branding and managing a business. So cool that you mentioned all these things. She's talking about a video that I make, which is about sharing pretty much everything we had been doing so far in terms of our teaching journey. So there will be a link right here for you to check out this video. But she says, so cool that you mentioned all of these things that you've done and why you are doing them. You are great personalities and it's great to share it. I can identify with so many things. I also really like your style of explaining and I think it's the best online tutorial I have ever watched. You have one more devoted subscriber willing to see all the videos immediately. Well, Iris, let's say Iris is your name. Your channel name is Iris Land. Iris, thank you so much for this testimonial. It really touched me because we do try to put our heart into everything we do. And this video in particular is the one that I really took the time and thought, okay, I'm gonna make this video and kind of collect all the different things people can learn from us into one video. So if you want to learn how to build a business, how to build your personal brand, how to design with Canva, this video is full of resources. Again, you can rewind a little bit and find the link up there, or you can find it in the description or simply browse the channel and you will find it. Thank you so much, Iris, for this lovely comment. And now back to the tutorial. All right, guys, we have two more resources to go that will help you create your Canva logo. This one is all about inspiration and it's a landing page that Canva created with a bunch of logo inspiration and how they actually look in real life placed on objects, on mockups, on t-shirts, on business cards, etc., etc. So there will be a link in the description so you can easily find this. And this page is simply called Logo Ideas. And when you scroll down, you will see a bunch of different logos. I think there are eight logos here in the grid. Different styles, different companies, different names, different techniques. And if you keep scrolling down, you will see these logos actually in action. Like these are fictional brands that Canva designers have created. And you can see them in action on business cards, on packaging, on boxes, on labels, on beverages, cans, stamps, all sorts of applications for your logo. So this this page could be consumed in less than a minute. Actually, you just literally go to this page, you scroll down and you see if something catches your attention. If it does, take a longer look at what you like about what you see on this page, because this might be the spark, might be this inspiration that will lead you to your next great logo idea. So it's always good to do this, and it's always good to see stuff that actually has been made in Canva, because you could go to Pinterest and do the same thing and find a lot of logos and find inspiration, but you're not sure you can actually reproduce these logos in Canva. Here, completely different. All of these have been made with Canva. So it's a great place to start and to find this little spark, this little fire that will start your logo creation process. And then the fifth and last resource I want to share with you today before I leave you go and create your logo is actually a special search you can run in the Canva template library that will surface great logos, I believe, great logo inspiration. And this search is app logo. So app for application, app logo, you type that in and then you'll find a good amount here of cool little neat clean logos, mostly for apps. So they are kind of colorful, techy, trendy in that way, which is, to be honest, the kinds of logos that work today. One of the kinds of logo. I'm not saying there's only one kind of logo that works, but I found this to be a nice source of inspiration as well. So again, go to Canva templates library, search for app logo, and then you will find the search page here, which also inspired me quite a bit. And that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today. Oh, wait, no, I have one bonus. Look at this. I found another landing page with Canva's brand guidelines. So I will link that in the description, but it's basically a link on the Canva web page, mostly for the press or for anybody who writes about Canva, blogs about Canva, creates content about Canva. You can download the Canva logo, the different versions of the logo, the app icon, etc., etc. You have the logo usage. Basically, what I found here is Canva's brand guidelines here online for everybody to discover. So if you're about to create 
create a visual identity your own or for a client or if you're just designing a logo this is great to look at to see how a big company like Canva is doing it because this is a great source of inspiration they talk about the fonts the colors the logo and the logo usage so I thought I would throw that in the basket for you to check out and now it is really the end of the tutorial all I have to do is to thank you guys for watching until the end if you're still there you are a super fan and you deserve a thumbs up thank you we love you all and I wish you a happy designing go make some great logos I will see you in the next video